to the plight of U.S. basketball player Brittany Griner, the two-time WNBA All-Star under arrest in Russia, facing a drug charge. Now, the timing of her arrest is raising questions this morning, and ABC's Zorin Shaw joins us now with more from Los Angeles. Zorin, good morning. Hi, good morning, Geo. Secretary Blinken speaking out about this recent incident this morning, just hours ago, saying any time an American is detained anywhere in the world, they stand ready to help. All of this coming as the State Department is urging American citizens to get out of Russia. This morning, the U.S. State Department telling all U.S. citizens to depart Russia immediately amid heightened tensions. It's an increasingly urgent message, with American officials now saying they are severely limited on helping U.S. citizens who choose to remain in Russia. WNBA star and two-time gold medalist Brittany Griner caught in the crosshairs of those tensions between the U.S. and Russia. The State Department saying they are aware of her arrest. Video released by Russian Customs showing a woman appearing to be the six foot nine Phoenix Mercury player going through airport security near Moscow. A statement beneath the video saying they found vape cartridges containing cannabis oil in her luggage, which in Russia could result in up to 10 years in prison. Reiner had been in Russia playing for the country's UMMC E. Kattenberg team. Now her agent saying they can confirm that as we work to get her home, her mental and physical health remain our primary concern. It's unclear if the move by Russia was retaliatory and how long Griner has been detained. A Russian statement only claiming her arrest occurred sometime in February. Her case sparking an outcry on social media, with many using the hashtag Free Britney now for Griner. Overnight, Griner's high school basketball coach telling Brittany to stay strong. Know that you have thousands of people rooting for you and praying for you. Don't give up. Two other Americans are also being held in American jails. Former Marines Trevor Reed and Paul Whelan, they have been behind bars for years. Their families and American officials saying their charges were fabricated, a part of what's called hostage diplomacy. Eva? Zareen Shaw for us there. Thank you. And joining us now is Bill Taylor, a former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, who is now a vice president of the United States Institute for Peace. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I want to start by asking you, what sense do you have that there is any discussion of a resolution going on in diplomatic back channels right now? Eva, it's not obvious, um, and it might not be obvious, but it's not obvious that there are back channels going on. Um, we know, of course, uh, yesterday that the Israeli prime minister was in Moscow having a conversation with President Putin. Uh, I understand from my contacts in uh, in Ukraine, they didn't get very far. They they. Uh, the Israeli prime minister did check in with President Zelensky uh, to, after that discussion, but the indications are from Ukraine that there was not progress made. Um, there apparently will be another round of this discussion between the Ukrainians and the Russians on the border with Belarus tomorrow. Um, those have not provided benefits. They have not resulted in agreements. There, as you have reported, there are attempts at, uh, at humanitarian corridors out of Mariupol and, uh, and other places. But as you've also reported, those have broken down when the Russians violated them. So uh, this is all to say that the diplomatic efforts uh, are so far coming up empty. Well, and then now we hear President Putin is warning Ukraine that it may lose its statehood and it compares these Western sanctions to a declaration of war. So how concerning is this heightened rhetoric that we're now hearing? So, Eva, the, on the statehood question, Ukraine is a state. It's an independent, sovereign nation. It has been for 30 years, uh, and it has been a it's been a people. It's been a nation for longer than Russia has been a nation. So it's a it's it's not for President Putin to decide. And the current government, the Zelensky government, is legitimately elected. Uh, he was elected in 2019, overwhelmingly, did a, did a, has done a great job, as you've reported again. He is leading his nation. His nation is sovereign. At, if at some point he has to move from Kyiv uh, to another part of Ukraine to maintain continuity, uh, there are parts of Ukraine where the Russians would have a very hard time getting to and occupying. And President Zelensky and his government um, will continue to be the legitimate government. The United States and Europe will continue to support President Zelensky and his legitimate government. 
uh, from the outside. They will continue to resist. This is not an insurgency, Eva. We're not talking about an insurgency. We're talking about a legitimate government that the international community, the world, recognizes, and that will continue. And the resistance will continue. As, as you also reported, President Zelensky has urged and, has, and didn't even need to urge. The Ukrainian people are fighting back dramatically, violently, valiantly, um, and they will continue to do that. So the, the Ukrainian nation will continue no matter what President Putin says. And the question is, how long can they hold out and how many lives will be lost in the fighting crosshairs? Mr. Taylor, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.